Welcome to Onshape. To help you get started, we've created a video to walk you through your first part in Onshape. So let's jump in. Onshape runs in a browser. You can choose from browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Opera. To log into Onshape, simply browse to cad.onshape.com. Type in your email address and a password, and you'll be taken to the Documents page. To create a new document, click Create at the top and type in a name. It's important to remember a document is a project level container. One document can hold as many parts and assemblies as you'd like. So we've created our first document and we're ready to start building our first part. The next step is to start a sketch. I'll left click the front plane, then click Sketch button in the toolbar. Now that we're in a sketch, I'll right click anywhere in the graphics and select View Normal to Sketch Plane. This will rotate the view so I'm looking normal to the sketch plane. And now we can start sketching. I'll start by selecting the circle command from the toolbar. Move my cursor over the origin and then left click. Move the cursor in any direction and you'll see the circle. Left click one last time and the circle is placed. We will do this one more time directly to the right of the previous circle. Notice the yellow line showing a horizontal reference to the previous circle. Now that we have our two circles, we can sketch two lines to join them. Select the line command from the toolbar and sketch two lines joining the circles like so. Notice the circles highlight letting you know that the line will be constrained to that circle. Also notice that as I'm placing the second point, I have the option to constrain my line tangent to the circle as well. However, I will need to manually add a tangent constraint between the first circle and the line. To do this, simply left click the line and then the circle and then select tangent from the toolbar. Now that we have a basic shape, we can add a few dimensions. Select the dimension command from the toolbar, left click the circle and then left click one more time to place the dimension. A window pops up asking to type in a value. I'll add a diameter for both circles as well as the distance between the two by selecting the two center points. Notice as I add dimensions, the sketch entities turn from blue to black, indicating the sketch is fully defined. I need two more circles and a rectangle to this sketch. I'll go back to the circle command, and I'll sketch two more circles at the center of the two previous circles. I want these two circles to have the same diameter, so I'll left click each circle, then left click the equal constraint in the toolbar. Now I can dimension either circle and both will change. My last step is a rectangle. I'll select the center rectangle from the toolbar, then left click the center of the first circle, move my cursor out, then left click again. I'll then add a width and height dimension to the rectangle by left clicking the appropriate lines. So we finished our sketch and we're ready to make this into a 3D model. I'll select the extrude command from the toolbar, hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse to rotate the model. Notice that Onshape has chosen contours from the sketch to extrude. I can simply set a depth or grab the manipulator and drag to dynamically resize. I also have the option to choose which contours to extrude. In my case, I'm going to deselect the sketch from the extrude dialog and then left click the contours that I would like to extrude. These sketch contours can even be reused. I'll click the show icon in the feature list to show the sketch and then start a new extrude. This time I'll select just the first circle and the keyway cut and extrude only that contour from the sketch. Type in the depth for the extrude, click the green check, and that's it. Congratulations, you've just created your first part in Onshape.